Hello humans, welcome, Andrew Fantasia here. You know, here on Digital Charcuterie, we're kind of superhero fans. We talk about them a bunch, sometimes too much, depending on the day. Uh, but we're also big board game fans, at least I am, and probably my favorite board game ever made that I have been obsessed with for the past year and a half has been this, Marvel United. It's this, and it's this, and it's that, and it's so many more things. It's one of those games that's just never-ending, which is what I love about it. If you've never heard of Marvel United, I'm going to put a link in the description below to a video that I made uh, kind of talking briefly about what it is and how much there is and how much I got. There, There's a lot to it. It's nuts. But if you clicked on this video, chances are you're probably already a Marvel United fan. And if you are, then like me... I hope you're excited because Simon and Spin Master have announced last month that we're finally getting a third season of the game. And I'm so excited, oh my god! So what we're going to be doing here on Digital Charcuterie is every once in a while, I am just going to talk about the process that this Kickstarter is going to go through. We're going to talk about what Simon is giving us. We're going to talk about the new expansions, the new rule sets, and of course, my favorite, all the new characters to add to the roster. That's what I love. The new rules and the new, you know, little things they add here and there to change things up. Those are all great and I love them. And they, you know, they contribute to the plug and play nature of Marvel United. So to me, that makes them beautiful. But in my opinion, the best thing about this game is the fact that there are so many playable characters and there's still so many playable characters we don't have yet. So that's what I'm looking forward to most about season three. But before we talk about characters, let's just talk about what Simon and Spin Master have released so far. For starters, there's this very bare bones trailer that gives us a good glimpse at some of the early prototype minis and what we can expect. And of course, they announced that the theme for this season is the multiverse. Season one was Plain Jane, the Avengers. Season two was the X-Men. Season three is the multiverse. I gotta admit, that's not the theme I would have gone with. Uh, I thought they were gonna go Spider-Verse for sure. A, to cash in on the fact that we're getting a new Spider-Verse movie this year. And B, because there's no core box that you can just go and buy at a Target or a Toys R Us that has Spider-Man in it. And I feel like that is something that the general public would probably want. So the fact that they skewed multiverse is super brave and definitely left of center, but I dig it. And I think that I trust them enough that they are not just going to reskin everybody and call it a variant at the end of the day, because that would be kind of lame. But again, we'll get to the characters when we get there. So what's interesting is the first character this trailer shows us is not a hero. It's not some big character that we've been waiting for for a long time. It's the villain Immortus. And in fact, I am, you know, I, I like to think I'm like 60% a Marvel encyclopedia. I'm not, you know, in the know like my buddy Ryan J. Marvel that I do the Infinity Rewatch podcast with that you can listen to right here on this channel. Uh, I don't know it like he does, but I know my Marvel, you know, a bit. And I got to admit, I saw Mortis and I'm like, who dis? I don't know who that guy is. So I had to look him up and turns out he is a Kang variant. The variant thing, hmm, I don't know. I, to me, it's just skins. And I don't need skins when there are so many characters that we haven't even seen yet at all. But fine, cool, Immortus. Next is a variant of Ghost Rider, and I gotta admit, this was also kind of puzzling to me. I'm like, okay, it's Ghost Rider. What makes him different? I thought if we did get another Ghost Rider, it would be like a full-on big mini where he's sitting on a motorcycle, because I just thought that would be kind of fun, but it's not. It's just a Ghost Rider with guns. More on him later. As we move on, we see Captain Carter, who is a very, very cool character, and I'm really glad we got her. She's my biggest MCU crush, so... I'm all for some Peggy Carter. Next, we get Shuri as Black Panther. Now, this, again, would qualify as a skin. I get it. But you're, you're trying to capitalize off the movie because the movie just came out and it's a hot motion picture. I get it. Lots of people want to play as Shuri Black Panther. Great. I love that we have this. As long as we also get great characters like Nakia and Mbaku because they are part of Wakanda and they are great and we have not seen them in any form. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's great that Shuri's here. I like it. And we see a little bit of a Loki. It looks like Lady Loki. 
or Sylvie or whatever they're going to call her makes an appearance here. And last but not least, the trailer gives us a tease for the big purple guy himself. I apologize, the big fuchsia guy himself. There is a difference. Purple is, you know, there's a lot of layers to purple. We can't just generalize it. So yeah, we're finally getting Galactus in Marvel United. It's about time. That is significantly exciting news, uh, but we know nothing other than the fact that he is coming. That's it. They've just teased the shadow. That's all we know. Then over the coming weeks on Simon's Twitter page, they've been very slowly unveiling the characters to us and showing us the full minis from what I assume will be the characters we get in the base game. They played a little Who's That Pokemon with us by giving us these mystery glimpses and asking us to identify them. And the first one they did this for was Ghost Rider, who ended up, strangely enough, being Cosmic Ghost Rider, who's a character I was not familiar with. And according to what they wrote, it's Punisher who makes a deal with Mephisto to become Ghost Rider so he can just kill a bunch of folks that he doesn't like. That's very Punisher. That's true to form. So it's a Punisher skin. Fine. But what's interesting is they made it an anti-hero. And that's something that has me very excited for this set is unlike season one, you know, season two introduced the anti-hero. Season one has none of them. So season two started peppering them in, but we really only got a handful. Season three, the gloves could come off in terms of anti-heroes. We could be seeing a swarm of purple characters. And yes, in this case, even though they are kind of on the fuchsia spectrum, they are purple characters. So Cosmic Ghost Rider, our first fully announced mini, is in fact purple. He's going to be a hero and a villain. I want as many villains as possible, so bring it on. That's exciting. The next one they announced I thought was going to be Captain Carter because she's front and center on the artwork, but that turned out to be Mighty Thor. Jane Foster as the Mighty Thor is coming to Marvel United. And I gotta admit, this is a character that I totally overlooked. I didn't even think of her, as you will see later. She completely flew under my radar, which is something that I feel like the Mighty Thor would actually do. She can fly after all. But she's gonna be a hero in this core box. Again, I'm assuming it's the core box. I'm assuming they're not spoiling any of the neat Kickstarter surprises this early in the game. And that's all Twitter's given us so far. But if you take a look at this absolutely gorgeous uh, promo art that's probably going to be the box for the core game. And I, I love the green, by the way, the green color scheme. It's, it's very different. It just looks new and unique and fresh. I love it. We see here, we've got Captain Carter. We've got Cosmic Ghost Rider way back there in the background. We've got the Shuri Black Panther. And then we've got some other folks. We've got a version of Spider-Man 2099 that is, if you ask me, the real version of Spider-Man 2099, the one they gave us in season one, the white and red, I don't know what that's about. That's got to be some new comic thing that I'm just not privy to because I'm not hip to today's scene, kids. But this blue and red one, the, um, oh, I forget his name, Miguel, Miguel O'Hara. That's what I know when I think of Spider-Man 2099. So is this a variant? Is this a different character? I don't know, but I'm excited he's here. And finally, very close to front and center, is Ironheart, another character that I was very excited for and I really hoped we would get because she has not been represented in any way in Marvel United. So Ironheart is finally confirmed and coming. We haven't gotten a look at her model yet. Last but not least, the game designer Andrea Carvesio made a statement on Simon's website and he talked about a little bit of what we can expect to see in Marvel United Season 3, particularly what's new in this version of the game in terms of rules. And what we've been told here, the little tastes we've been given, they're interesting. They're very interesting. They're not, I think, what anybody would have expected. First of all, there's a solo mode, caps lock, S-O-L-O, -O, solo mode, not like the Xavier mode or shield mode from Seasons Yore. We're talking one player controlling one hero. Apparently, there's going to be a mode where you can do that. You want to just be Spider-Man fighting Green Goblin? You're going to be able to do that. So that's kind of neat. Again, it's another way to add some variety and spice to the magical stew that is this game. Sure, I probably won't use it too much because I really like the way I play now, but it's there for people who want it, and I'll try it out once because I've done that with everything else. Beautiful. The biggest thing Andrea touched on was the addition of equipment cards. These are going to be cards that, again, you can add or subtract to a version of the game at will, and they are pieces of equipment. They're items. 
he shows us two cards here. We've got Captain Carter's shield, and we've got Cosmic Ghost Rider's held chain of doom or whatever. And he also makes mention of other items such as Cosmic Ghost Rider's motorcycle, Captain America's shield, and even Spider-Man's web shooters and Mjolnir and who knows what else. And these are going to be, from the looks of it, one-time use items on these little cards that you just pop down with your character. And at any point in the game, once per game, you can use them, flip them over, and that's it. I'm assuming it's once per game just based on the text I'm reading on these cards here. Again, maybe this won't be for everybody. Maybe it won't be for me, but I like that this variety exists. And I'm really curious, are they going to make an item card for every single hero? Because that's a lot of cards and I don't know where we're supposed to be keeping them. I'm fascinated by this. I want to know more. I want to know how they plan to integrate this as seamlessly as possible. It's going to be really interesting to see in the coming weeks and months how much of this gets revealed. There's a bunch here that are blurred. If I zoom in, I can see that the hell cycle is the front one and it looks like there's a Loki or Lady Loki one there in the middle. So who knows, but equipment cards are coming and they're probably gonna be great. They, they look beautiful, just like everything else in this game. The art design is mwah, all the chef kisses. The last thing Andrea dropped was a very tiny, teeny little tidbit about Loki. Uh, the big thing with season three is they are listening to the fans and listening to hear what fans want. And apparently a lot of fans wanted a hero version of Loki that they can play as. And it sounds like we're getting that. Whether that means this lady Loki we saw in the trailer or just a blue mini for Loki with his own hero cards separate from that. Either way, more Loki is coming. So if you're a Loki fan, there you go. You got it made. Now on the subject of characters, I'll close this video off with something bananas and that is my wish list yeah i'm obsessed with marvel united like so many people who have played it and loved it and i may or may not have written up a wish list of what i would have wanted a season three to look like including what expansions it would come with and what characters you would get in said expansions I went nuts. The weird thing is I don't even have that much time on my hands, so I don't know how I got this done. But I just thought as a little treat, what we would do throughout the process of this Kickstarter campaign is uh, we would just have this wish list up here. And what I would do, because it would just make me happy and satisfy my urges, is every time we get a character who is on my wish list, we just tick it off. And at the end of everything, after all those little ticks have been made, we see how many of my wish list characters made it to the final cut. I hope it's all of them, but who knows? So let's take a look at that together right now. Okay, so first up on the wish list, uh, I started with the expansions here. The core box I had in mind doesn't work anymore because I, I had a Spider-Man core thing, but, but whatever. Anyway, Inhuman Madness, that's our first one. Uh, it's color coded here for ease and because colors are nice to look at. We got four characters. You know, I'm just going with how the expansions have gone in the past. I'm trying not to be too over the top. I'm trying to think like Simon and Spin Master. So we got Black Bolt, Crystal Triton, and Maximus the Mad as our villain. You get some of the Inhumans. If you want others, you're going to have to cough up extra because that's how they roll. We know it by now. We're not going to pretend like it doesn't happen. Moving on. Next up, Return of the Eternals. I know a lot of people were rubbed the wrong way by that Eternals movie. I personally loved it. I don't see what the, the big bad deal was. But anyway, I want to see the Eternals. There's a lot of characters that movie gave us that I want to now play in the game. So once again, I split up the team a bit. You don't get everybody. You get Cersei, Sprite, Druig, and Gilgamesh as your heroes. You got Crow as a villain. I mean, he's not the most memorable villain, but hell, neither was Mastermind or the Brood Queen, but the game gave us that too. That's what I love about MU. It gives us everybody. So why not Crow? And then last but not least, Icarus, as an anti-hero because he made a great villain in the movie and I want to recreate that stuff because I loved it. So why not? Next, Annihilation. The cosmic stuff is stuff I know very little about, but I know these characters exist and I know they have fans and I know people have wanted to see them. We've got our space folks. We've got Corsair, Cyclops' father, Lalandra, Nova, the Frankie Ray version, the female Nova, and Quasar. And our villain is Annihilus. Annihilus is a big deal in Marvel, so why not have Annihilus as a villain? Now, those are the three expansions that are like, okay, those are fun and I like them, but now we start getting into stuff that really makes me excited. Here we go. So starting off, we have Supernaturals. 
again, this is something new and fresh that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has given us that they would probably want to capitalize on as fast as they can. We got Elsa Bloodstone and Werewolf by Night. Boom, two great heroes right there, two great looking minis. You know those minis will look nice. Lilith is our villain. She's a big supernatural villain. Doctor Strange fights her. She's the final boss in the Midnight Suns game that just came out, so she's relevant. And then finally, as an anti-hero, Man-Thing. Again, I'm just thinking of how Simon would make a Man-Thing mini, and I am all for it. I don't think he's really done anything too evil in the comics, as far as I know, but I feel like he would make a good anti-hero just because he's a big scary monster and he probably gets treated that way a lot. I feel like the first time any hero meets him, they're like, oh damn, I gotta beat you up until they learn he's a good guy. So I made him an anti-hero because why not? I like having more anti-heroes. Ooh, and now we get to the big stuff. This is Gamma World. This, um, this is what I need. This is what I really need. The world of the Hulk has not really been touched on. So we've got A-Bomb, we've got Doc Samson, and we've got Hulkling. A-Bomb is a big blue abomination. And I mean, you, he, he, it's a blue mini. So there you go. The painting is halfway done for you already. And then in villain terms, we've got the leader and Red She-Hulk. Again, the painting on Red She-Hulk will be halfway done. You've got less work to do. Those are great, memorable, colorful characters that I want to see put into chibi form and stuck into this game. These are all, please, please make these. We need this in our life. Now, anybody who's gone all in on seasons one and two can tell you that we're not lacking for characters. We've been spoiled. But the disparity between the amount of heroes and the amount of villains, that's a wide margin. And I wanted to close that gap. There's a lot of villains that I wanted to see make an appearance because basically every villain is a different game. So the more the merrier. So I have here an expansion called Villains United. No heroes in here, just good old bad guys with a little bit of a twist at the end. We got Ironmonger, Ghost, Gore the God Butcher, Shu Wenwu, Yan Rog, because they're all great popular villains. The movies have popularized them. Let's put them in there. They would look good. Finally, Morbius. I'm just thinking of a little purple Morbius toy. He's there. He's a hero and a villain. He's a great anti-hero. Do it up. But I didn't stop there. I went with Villains United 2. Hey, if we can have Blue Team and Gold Team, we can have Villains United 1 and 2. And I just carried on. I did the same thing because there's more. Abomination, of course. Arnim Zola, Mole Man, Mordo. You can't have Doctor Strange without Mordo. Ulysses Claw and another anti-hero who fills out the Inhumans roster from way back in Expansion 1, that'd be Medusa. Why not? She's great. And again, she wears a lot of purple, so your painting is halfway done. Finally, the last expansion would just be plain and simple called Galactus Hungers, because let's face it, that's all you need. The, the big guy. That's all you need is a big old Galactus. I don't know how they're going to do him. I think they might end up doing him as like a bust, so you don't see his whole body. Just be more effective and make him look bigger. I don't know, but we're getting Galactus. We know he's coming, so I guess we can check this off. First one, yeah, confirmed. Last but not least, there's the promo box, and this is where, folks, I went off the chain. The promo boxes are my favorite. They are my absolute favorite because they're just a big old giant toy box, and that's what I did here. Is It's my wish list, so I just filled it up with the toys I wanted to see. So here we go in alphabetical order, starting with the heroes. I'm just going to breeze through these. We got Ajax, Armor, Black Knight, Deathlock, big character from the 90s, Deathlock. You got Dum Dum Dugan. I wanted a Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider with the motorcycle. That probably won't happen, but who knows? Gorgon, Ironheart. There's another check mark. We know we're getting her. Beautiful. Two check marks so far. Karnak, Kate Bishop, great character. Kazar maybe comes with Zabu, just like how we got Kitty Pride with Lockheed. Why not? Kingo, another Eternal. Lockjaw, Makari, Nakia, Phaistos. Photon, Pip the Troll, Rescue, Scarlet Spider, that's a big one for me. Scarlet Spider is so cool, I want to see him in this game. Silk, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Punk, Spider-Woman, the Julia Carpenter version. There's a lot of Spider-Women, and she looks significantly different from the Spider-Woman we got in Season 1, so no complaints there. Stature, Fina, White Tiger, Wong, again, you can't have Doctor Strange without Wong. I don't know why we haven't gotten Wong yet. And Yelena Belova. Uh, I don't know how big she is in the comics, but she has made waves in the MCU, so why not bring her aboard? And now, moving on to the villains. You're going to see a lot of Spider-Man and Hulk villains on this list because they just haven't given us all of them yet, so here they come. Absorbing Man, Agatha Harkness, Alistair Smythe, Batroc the Leaper, Chameleon, Hobgoblin. He's my personal favorite goblin. Let's see what we can do with him. I want some Hobgoblin action. Hydro Man, I'm imagining him being done 
with the water effects the way they did Namor. And God, that looks so cool. Please make him Jackal, Jackal Lantern, Maestro, Mephisto. Everybody's going to be clamoring for Mephisto. Put him in here. Mr. Negative, Red Hulk. Again, that painting is halfway done. Red Hulk, please. Scorpion, Shocker, Swarm, Spot. He's going to be famous. There's a movie coming out where he's the main antagonist. Put Spot in there. Put Tarantula, too. Tombstone, Titania, Whirlwind, The Wrecking Crew. They can work kind of like the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Yellow Jacket and Zax. Some of those are outside the box, but I would just love to see them all. I think they'd be a lot of fun. And finally, the anti-heroes of the promo box. And it's just this list. It's just a small list of anti-heroes, but I think they're characters we need to see. The Lizard, classic Spider-Man villain. How is he not in this game yet? M'Baku, he's a villain in the comics a lot. He's great in the movies. Let's have him both ways. Prowler, same thing. Silver Sable, U.S. Agent, and Shang-Chi's sister, Xu Xiaoling. Let's get them in here. Finally, I almost forgot to include this, but there was an all-in bonus last time where if you went all-in, you got Old Man Logan as a bonus. And I thought, okay, for this time, what would we have? And I decided, let's go with Uwatu the Watcher. He can be a little bit bigger than the average bear there. And maybe he has a, a starting hand card where as long as it's face up in the timeline, you can always see the next upcoming master plan card. It might be a little bit OP, but maybe to counterbalance that, he has a bottom of the deck card, just like Old Man Logan. And when you draw that card, you must play it next. And that card is called, I don't know, uh, Sworn Never to Interfere. And once you play it, you have to flip over the first card and you can no longer see what the enemy's about to do. So it gives you a starting advantage, but that advantage eventually wears off and you got to use your own wits. So that's my wish list. Who did I miss? Anybody here that you agree with, disagree with? Let me know. We got two check marks so far. I hope the check marks keep coming. So that'll just about wrap things up for this first video. We didn't know a whole lot about multiverse until just really today when this uh, news dropped, when this interview with Andrea dropped, and that gave us a lot more to work with. Otherwise, this would have been a much shorter video. But I just wanted to introduce you guys to this concept and invite you to follow me along on this journey. We don't know when the Kickstarter is going to be up and running yet. I hope it's, you know, now. But who knows? By the end of January would be great because that would mean, theoretically, we could get the game by Christmas or maybe this time next year you know, in our hands, in our laps to slobber over and just enjoy. Let's keep our eyes open for that together. And every time Simon drops news or interviews or pictures of minis or trailers or whatever, you can come right back here and we'll talk about it and cover it together because that's how digital charcuterie rolls, baby. So until that time comes, thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Fantasia and I'll see you all next time in the Master Plan.